Hello everyone and welcome back. We are covering another Moth Keepers build, but this time it will be combining with none other than the ex dearest grenade launcher for maximum Moth Madness. Well, kind of. This is a build I've done before, but more for the strand side and never for Arc subclass. So now I've taken a dive with the building onto that one area this time, and using what I learned this time round to create a masterful Arc build with a ton of surprises. With this build, you can jolt, blind, confuse, and get a shield in all in one action. Also, your grenade launcher can further blind once amplified and create even more moths for our tired use. Two, great exotics in one. Let's break this all down. Starting with aspects, you're going to want to have flow state where defeating Joel targets makes you amplified. And then you want temper strike where sliding and activating your melee unleashes an arc uppercut attack towards enemies. For fragments, we have Spark of Recharge where while critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerates by 400%. Spark of Beacons where while being amplified, your arc special weapon final blows blind targets. Spark of Shock where your arc grenades jolt targets. And Spark of Ions where defeating jolt targets grants ion traces. Having Spark of Beacons is a must for the build as it will allow you to blind targets from each special kill made. This, combined with Moth Keeper's effect of also blinding targets, allows us to control all sorts of enemies within our range, which makes it harder for most enemies to run away when targeted. Now, as a heads up, our grenade launcher will auto reload per shot made, so you won't need to always worry about reloading it yourself. However, the weapon is a bit finicky to use and relies on direct hits to splash damage to fully get the hang of the weapon. The Spark of Beacons will help make it easier to land your shots but also so will the moths produced from your kills. The Spark of Shock and Ions will benefit our grenades, while Spark of Recharge is a fail safe buff that will greatly increase our ability regen when things do get dicey. All in all, everything works out as planned. Within the mods and stats section, having both resilience and discipline at a high level will be important for supporting of the build. Having a bit of focus into strength as well will benefit the user, as this will be used here and there. Having a tier 5 stat for a 1 minute 16 cooldown is fine enough, but if desired to, you can further increase it with accompanying mods to support it. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction for the build, with a bit of a trade off for my recovery. The following level is required for surviving lethal hits in endgame, and can be life and death if not fully prepared for certain encounters. Although we don't have additional mods to support this, our Moth Keeper secondary effect of granting us a 22.5% avoid overshield can help with absorbing enough force to prevent enemies from killing us outright. Since we have the grenade launcher to help as well, we can double our overshield's effect while still getting kills as well. So overall, you always stay on top. A discipline will be at tier 10 for a 37 second cooldown. As your grenades are replaced and cooldown is drastically reduced, your option with using your grenades often will drastically become more commonplace as the build goes on. Having just grenade kickstart will be enough to support the build for the user. However, in my case, I like to make sure our key stats are always available no matter the situation we are in. So having impact induction for a 12% grenade regen, a bomber for a 12% grenade regen, and distribution for a 4% will be the ideal optional pick. We do also have the demo on our main primary, but this was more for the strand weapon support and effect it will provide. The next section will be focusing on armor charges and additional mods that are recommended for the build. Charged up will give you a plus 1 to how many charged stacks you have, while stacks and stacks will increase orb collection to plus 2. After that, having the harmonic siphon, elemental charge, and powerful attraction mod will allow us to create and collect orbs of power within our venicity. Lastly, we have the ammo finder, reserves, and scavenger mods for increasing the payload of our special and heavy weapons. It is important to have double scavenger mods to help with our grenade launcher heavy usage. For weapons, we are using Rufus Fury with Hatchling and Demolitionist as our perk combo. Now, demo isn't so much needed here since our grenade cooldown is already quite low to start with, and adding on the following perk will only reduce it even more. However, the two perk combo is useful when combined with the seasonal mods since we can create mobile fedlings and then use them to net more grenade energy as long as they get a kill. With unraveling orbs and Horb shuttle together, you can inflict continuous damage against enemies you face while also making full use of the amount of fedlings being used. As this is a raid weapon exclusive, I would suggest players look for alternatives if you are unable to get the following, such as Perpetualus and Lethal Abundance, or any strand weapon of your choice. 
a secondary with the X Dio's grenade launcher. The following is a great combo weapon example that, when combined with his accompanying exotic, it actually becomes a lot more stronger over time. Using what I learned last time to enhance our blind effect more, the following weapon is great with taking on the minor and major enemies in one group and then escalate with their moths. The only downside of the weapon is that it does more damage when it lands direct hits rather than splash damage. This means a bit of practice will be needed to master it fully. As of last time, we covered an all special build that made full use of the Moth Keepers and Spark of Beacon's blind effect for locking down areas, enemies, and also deal really good damage against bosses alike. The success of the build provided players with a more new and art crazy build that, under certain circumstances, could lead to early death if players did not manage their special weapon ammo correctly. With lessons learned, I have brought back the same build but made a few changes to lean more into the high moth usage. What you're seeing is a build combo between Moth Keepers and X Dearest that most of you would be familiar with from the last season of the release. Using what we learned the last time, investing highly into your discipline stat will vastly reduce your Moth Keepers grenade cooldown by quite a high percent, something that we do need with what we are going for. From them, having the X Dearest grenade launcher with a ton of Arc Special mods and the Beacon's fragments will allow our two exotics to provide a ton of damage via our arc moths, support via void moths, and tons of blind effect from their given area. As well as the large benefits gained from having the two in hand, the arc subclass ability of making us amplified and grant us ion traces will also allow our gear to become more flexible and suitable in the long run in terms of activating our grenade launcher and going crazy with it from there. It's very much the same build we did last time, but more heavily focused around the high usage of moths. I do find it strange how slept off a combo it is when being applied in end game, as it does everything most players would want when running GMs. Being able to blind and jolt all sorts of enemies via your two exotics open up what type of primary and heavy you may want to use, since it will greatly benefit as an anti unstoppable weapon and has great collateral damage to it. On top of that, the amount of moths being produced and how they act can further help when in sticky situations, such as being the lone survivor in the team and you need a quick overshield to save your bodies while also needing something to take out the large group of enemies that just spawned in. Lastly, x is when amplified is also very good with unleashing hell and blind fire when you really need an area cleared. However, the only issue I found with the build is how easily you can run out of special ammo if not careful and how using a grenade launcher requires more direct hits rather than splash damage. The first issue is covered by the mods we have, which does help every now and then. The second issue requires users to practice a bit since it's very weak on splash damage area. And in GMs, that requires at least one to two shots to take out most minor enemies, more if against the bigger enemies, which I would then advise you to use a heavy weapon instead unless you can land more direct hits with a grenade launcher. Its appeal of applying Jolt, Blind and Shields will greatly enhance your gameplay as long as you have the right stats, mods and fragments to back it all up. Once you get the ball rolling, it can lock down the worst areas to navigate in in higher difficulty via its Blind Effect package and if you mess up, you can always apply Shield in a hurry. The only downside of the build is the ammo regen and need more direct hits with your special weapon. However, this has been covered and not a huge issue to overcome. Overall, mobs are amazing to use and you really need to try these more with how outrageous they can get in a variety of content. So I hope you all enjoyed today's build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and I also recommend you view my playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.